So what is a mandala? Mandalas can be found in just about every culture throughout the world, and they share a few things in common. One thing in particular is their geometry. Mandalas rotate around a central point using rotational symmetry and radial symmetry, which we can see illustrated here, and which we see in nature all the time around us. As an artist and a teacher, I've used mandalas as a terrific group tool for making collaborative artworks. These are a few examples students have made using the types of processes and tools we're about to engage in with the mandala kit. Hello everybody, congratulations on getting your mandala kit. Let's get into this and see what we've got. You'll have a Studio Pick business card, a paper drop sheet. I've included three practice sheets for you to get the idea of rotation and for you to practice your stamps on. Um, there's also five sheets of mandala paper. Uh, this includes two colored pieces and three white sheets. Uh, you'll get a little treat and a pencil. Uh, we also have a drafting set for you for drawing the design first. Moldable foam pieces, some ink stamp pads, and finally some texture plates that you can make your rubber stamps out of. You'll also need to get a long straight edge. A ruler will do so you can draw corner to corner on your paper. A heating tool uh, or hair dryer, a water container, paper towels, some scrap paper uh, for testing your stamps, and markers or colored pencils, which are optional. Start by choosing a sheet of mandala paper. Using a pencil and a straight edge, connect the corners with lines forming four quadrants and creating a center rotation point in the middle. Choose a shape from the drafting tools and line it up with a pencil line and trace the shape. Continue rotating the shape into the next quadrant and trace the same lines again. Keep rotating the shape around the center point, tracing as you go. Next, choose a new shape from the drafting tools. I'm going to use my protractor here and line it up on that line and trace it four times. It's okay to trace over and through other shapes, creating new ones as you go along. Using the ruler, you can connect points to create new shapes as long as you are consistently moving from the same place in each quadrant. Repeating four times every time. I'm going to try and use my compass here, pressing down really firmly on the point and spinning. I'm going to adjust the pencil a little bit so that I can make it a little bit larger and darker. Pressing down and twisting. Oops, wrong place. I have to remind myself sometimes where I put the point. So don't be afraid to go back and check. I'm starting to like my design. I think it's got enough shapes in it for this project to work out well, but I'm going to divide some of the larger areas as my final decision. The last decision I'm going to make is to divide up these larger shapes on the outside with my triangle. So I line it up each time rotating around the center and draw these final four lines 
that give me the design that I really like. I can erase and create other unique shapes inside, or you can lighten the lines a little before you start the stamping process, although most of the color will cover the lines. Next, let's set up for making stamps. Get your texture plates out. Choose the texture plate and the stamp you'd like to work with. And use a heat tool or a heat gun from the hardware store or a hair dryer. The stamps are lightweight, so be careful. They blow around a little bit, as you can see. If you're using a hair dryer, I suggest one that's over 2,000 watts. This is a heat tool found at any craft store. This works really well. Press firmly, and it's ready to go. You can use any side of the foam pieces. You can also reuse the design piece by heating it again and pressing a new pattern. Use fun objects to make some unique stamps. Here I'm using a compass, which makes a really cool little robot character. Now I'm ready to stamp. Take some test paper, get your water handy and your paper towels so you can clean the stamps and go for it. I press the stamp all around so it gets covered nicely and test it before I get into my mandala. Using these pencil guidelines, stamp the mandala. And I place it in exactly the same place each time. Close as I can. You can see I rotate it as well. And then I clean the stamp and on to the next color. Continue filling the mandala in, in this fashion, until you like the final result. It's a lot of fun to stamp and then keep stamping as it fades out, like the pink here. Don't be afraid to layer your stamps, but do be careful not to mix your stamp pad colors so I usually clean really well in between colors. There really is no right and wrong. Whatever feels fun and right and enjoyable, that's going to be the right answer for you. I thought it needed a little contrast, so I brought in the dark blues. And now a little pop of orange red on top of that orange robot guy. I'm filling in about 80 or 90 percent of my mandala and then I'm going to wait 30 to 45 minutes for the ink to dry. You could also speed it up with a heat tool. I grab my markers and I start dropping some precision back into the mandala with straight edges. How much outlining you care to do in the mandala is entirely up to you. Many people are perfectly happy with the stamped mandala and don't add anything else. I particularly like the sharp edges though. Ultimately the mandala is a reflection of your decisions and the colors and choices that you like. So there are no wrong choices uh, and let that guide you into having a lot of fun with this process. I hope you enjoyed this project. I look forward to sharing many more art experiences with you in the future.